Hi and welcome everyone to a very special unboxing and review of a very special item that I have in front of me right now. Now from the description you might see that what it is, this is the EFX Collectibles Darth Vader Helmet Legend Edition. Now this is a very, very high sought after item and what's really, really cool is that I was able to grab this from EFX and uh, it's really cool. It's a really cool story I want to let you know what how this happened. but. A while ago, uh, EFX put up on their website that they found a couple of extra items in their warehouse. Some of the items that they posted up first was the ABS Darth Vader helmet, which is a very econ economical uh, helmet that you can purchase on their website. And I thought about grabbing one of those because I really wanted a very nice helmet for of Darth Vader that looked like something from the movie. And before I could even try and buy one, they sold out very quickly. So I was very uh, sad about that. But you know, it, it wasn't that big of a deal at the time. Uh, the next thing you know it, I went back on their website and they ended up posting up on their website the limited edition Darth Vader helmet, which was made of fiberglass and it's very also only limited to 1,000 of them made in, uh, in quantity, which was only available to people in the States and international. And I ended up trying to figure out, you know what, I said to myself, why not grab that? It'll be a nice birthday gift for myself. I've always wanted one and I got it. So I ended up went online, purchased it, and it was really cool. I ended up getting it in, and a couple days later, I saw on their website that they had just found a couple of the Legend Edition uh, helmets, and if, they, if anybody was interested, they could email them. And I was really bummed out because that was something that I really wanted to have, but they were not available until it was too late. I already bought the Limited Edition. So uh, I had the Limited Edition at home, and I had not opened it, I just bought it and I was going to do an unboxing as, you, as I'm about to do today. But it was kind of sad because I, I felt like I missed out on that and I could have gotten one. But I decided to go ahead and email uh, EFX Collectibles and also Brian Ono, who is the president, I believe, of uh, the company. And two days later, I get an email from them, from Brian Ono, saying, Hey, if you want, you can return the item, uh, just pay for the shipping and handling and we will just uh, uh, give you credit towards the Legend Edition and I just pay up the rest of the money and I say sure great I ended up doing that I put on the money I sent it in and next thing you know it I ended up getting the Legend Edition I was very very happy to, that uh, EFX and Brian Ono were able to do this for me I mean it's it's you know one of those things like once you buy something from people you're not sure if they'll, re if they'll accept it especially a high collector item like this uh, he did say originally that he wasn't sure if uh, if there was going to be a, an artist proof one and I said it was fine if they couldn't find one I was really hoping to get one but if they couldn't find one they would be fine and he did end up sending one that says artist proof on it and I'm very happy about that so it's one of those things that I'm just very grateful for companies such as EFX that uh, was able to accommodate this whole thing and be able to you know through their customer service be able to help me out and I'm very happy to get this in my hands today because Unlike the limited edition Darth Vader helmet, this one is the legend one, which was only limited to 364. Now, why 364, you might ask? I'll tell you why. Originally, when these went up online, the helmet was only supposed to have 250 pre-orders that they were going to be available. And so when the pre-orders went up online, the EFX credit card server could not handle all of the orders and it somewhat crashed and it ended up taking a lot more orders than expected so instead of having 250 of the legend helmets made 364 were made and I have one of them I don't know what number it might be uh, I'm just very happy to have it and what's great about this helmet compared to like the limited edition the limited edition helmet is more of an idealized version of what the helmet should be if it was cleaned up and if it was straight out of what the the concept of what they believed in paint wise was going to be but the legend edition was all of the little uh, imperfections that the helmet had from the movie and it was and came out like that it even has the famous I believe C scar on the right cheek of the helmet which we will see hopefully in this um, unboxing and review and, and all that stuff and it's made out of Faber glass and it's very sturdy and all that and it's very great to have that because to me, this is one of the most important, if not only important, item of the Star Wars universe is the Darth Vader helmet uh, because 
he is a very iconic character in the Star Wars line, and his entrance in that movie is by far one of the best entrances ever. As soon as he walks into that, uh, onto the screen, you notice he is the best, best of the worst <laughs> there is. So, uh, uh, long enough of my ranting. Apologize. I just wanted to let you know about that. So uh, let's get to it and open this guy up. All right, guys. So as you can see, here's the box, and it says this side up, which is where I'm supposed to cut. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, an actual size of this thing. Uh, the actual size of this is about uh, 31 inches across. It is 19 inches uh, widthwise, and height is about 17 inches. So it's a pretty big box. Uh, in case you're wondering how big this thing is. So now that this is in place, let's actually open this guy up. Hoping you guys see what I'm seeing. So yep. It's like Christmas all over again. Except I never got this bunch of a big uh, item for Christmas. Well, never mind that. <laughs> There we go. There's one. There's two. As we see here, all right. It's very packaged really nicely. Here is a cardboard box that's covering it. So that's going to the side. And one of the first items that you get to see here is a nice uh, EFX poster of Darth Vader. Um, let me see if we can see that. EFX. This is a very, very nice uh, little poster. I'm really going to frame this guy and put it up in my room. It's just so cool. Let's just put this aside. And as you can see right here, we have a warning. This is not a toy. Do not wear it for protection. So this is obviously a collector's item. It's not a toy you can wear. Some, nothing similar to like the uh, Hasbro... Um, the Hasbro Darth Vader helmet they came out a while ago and here we have a nice little cardboard cutout that says the Darth Vader helmet a new hope legend official prop replica which is great because it's an official prop replica that means it's just you know made with all the licenses in place and here we have another EFX envelope let's open this guy up Check him out. I believe this is probably the certificate of authenticity. And then it has, here it is. Yep, this is a artist proof, all right. However, it doesn't say a number. So it's fine if it doesn't have a number for me, as long as I know it's artist proof. I'm trying to get this out. There we go. So a number plaque, it would have been nice, but even if I didn't get one, I'm just happy to have it in my hands. So here we go. I know some collectors like the numbers on there, but I, I'm not a big deal about that. Look at that. It is proofed, artist proofed by Brian Muir, the original sculptor of the Darth Vader helmet, which is really nice. Something that... You know, it's nice to have around. Here we have the Darth Vader Legend of Official Prop Eric Look up hand, little handy bandy book. And in here we have the I'm sure I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a nice little bio on how the Darth Vader helmet uh, was made, I believe, and they have a lot of the photos here on how it was made. It's really cool how it was originally casted and I believe this is probably updated photos of how they casted this helmet or at least uh, the original helmet and here we have the making of a legend it's pretty awesome sketches of the original Ralph McQuarrie design of Darth Vader's helmet and here we have the Brian Muir on November 25th 2011 artist proofed certificate of authenticity which is really nice. So this is basically, oh look at that, there's more photos right here of Darth Vader and that's the helmet and how it's supposed to look like hopefully once we take it out. A little battle damage worn. So that's awesome. And we also get 
the EFX postcard, which is basically register your product, which is something I will do as soon as I can. And some nice little EFX stickers. If you want to put them somewhere on anywhere, folders or whatever you have. Let's put this aside for a moment. Forget that. And right here what we have now is the base that is used for this helmet. Now this base is really huge. Uh, I'm not really going to take this out right now, but I'm sure you can see it what it and see it from the camera. And what it is is basically a a piece of wood which they has like a brush metal effect with a nice plexiglass on top of it. It has a nice little uh, area here in the middle for this bar. If I can get this bar out, which uh, screws in. You have to screw it on to for the display that later on comes with this that will be displayed for the Darth Vader helmet in your place and then right here they have the little plaque holder which is pretty cool so let's uh, move on to the next phase and that's the helmet itself take this out slowly alright oh, 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 oh. oh guys guys I hope you guys can see this I know you can't right now but you will be seeing it soon and here we have oh it's super light I thought it was going to be heavier but it's not Oh, 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 the Darth Vader helmet, a little bit of the uh, styrofoam. You can see it has the amber lenses. You can see the, oh my God, this detail is amazing. Oh, so happy. <laughs> like, look at that. It's amazing. That's the helmet itself, or the first part of it. Now, originally, uh, something just to be aware of. This little section up here, it was not originally on the um, original Darth Vader helmet from A New Hope. This was placed here, I believe, by EFX or any, uh, just to make sure that the top portion of the helmet can connect to it and stay on. It's a very powerful magnet, I hear, that connects this. But the original movie version had only uh, Velcro on across the forehead, which is why whenever you see the movie, and the clips, the the helmet always looks a little off. It always looks either to the, a little bit to the right, to the left, or a little bit too forward. And that's because they originally used a uh, piece of Velcro to hold it down. And that's what I really like about the fact that the original Darth Vader helmet and how it was is that it's not the best of the best that was made. It was made of whatever they could at the time because it was some movie they were they didn't know what it was about, and. They didn't know how to make these things, and this is what came up. But what's very interesting about this is what what the real reason I really love this helmet is the little imperfections and the little things that were made to change during the concept of this uh, movie. But uh, I'll get into that in a little while. Let's look at the other helmet piece. Let's put this down for a little bit. Hold on. And here we have the giant dome. And look at that. Oof. It's got some... Fiber, not a fiberglass. It's got a, some of the styrofoam in there. And as you can see, it is fiberglass made because I'm sure all of this is the fiberglass look of it. So it's not smooth out on the inside or anything. You can see inside right there is the other part of the helmet that will connect to this. And and as you can see right here, it looks like, I can't see if you can see it. Right here it is. Looks like there's a magnet right there. So I think that's where the magnet is placed in the uh, mask. And I've heard originally some people who've gotten this, they've said that the uh, magnet is so powerful they can actually scratch the helmet. So I'll probably put like a piece of uh, felt or something on top of this. I mean, it's got, it's a little felty here, but I want to put something else in between just to keep it from getting scratched. But yeah, look at that right there. And it's not glossy. It's very like matted or light gloss on there. And it's very, as, you, as I said, it's not perfect, but that's what's great about it because in the original, this is like an original copy of the film at films used propped. And that's what I love about uh, EFX and what they do. They don't make props that are basically, uh, how should I say, uh, much more nicer and cleaned up like Anovos does. Anovos does great jobs in making very nice looking helmets. But EFX, in my opinion, does make these helmets based on how they were made in the movies. And so you can have a piece of that history in your own collection. And for the price that they actually were selling this, I think it's a fair price. 
But uh, let me see if I can get some of this stuff out and then we can uh, look at it much better and closer. So I have already gone ahead and uh, put together the display stand for this. And I wanted to put the helmet, at least the first part of it, so I can give you a really nicer detailed look as I, with my hands. And it's very nice and it's very asymmetrical because uh, it was hand sculpted by Brian Muir out of the Raw from Macquarie sketches. And it looks really cool. Uh, I mean, it's it's not digitally sculpted like the uh, these... Um, these days uh, how everything is it's all hand done and so it gives you that very nice like you know it's made i don't know for me like it's it's just looks great uh, it's hard to describe i guess uh, as you can see over here the side of it you can see the gunmetal and black on it it's pretty nice turn this to the other side you can see the inside is actually padded uh, i didn't give you a look at that uh, prior to the uh when i was opening it up uh, it does have a tag in here that says uh, 2011 EFX because this product actually came out, I believe, in 2011. That's, wow, that's eight years ago. And uh, luckily, I was able to grab them, one of these guys. And here's the other side of it. Pretty nice gunmetal gray all over it, too. Let's look at the front again. And, and as the original um, concept uh, of this helmet was made, is the idea was that they wanted to make this whole helmet... Uh, all in black so that it looks like it did in the I believe the sketches of Rob McQuarrie uh, McQuarrie I apologize and what had happened though when they were actually filming this uh, during uh, the shoot of Star Wars they noticed that a lot of the details of the helmet was lost so there was an issue with that they couldn't quite get the look of it and especially the uh, the nice cheekbones that were sculpted here you know, the breathing apparatuses around this area was kind of lost with all the lighting because it was so dark. So what they ended up doing is they ended up painting partially the helmet in gunmetal gray to contrast the black so that it at least, at least picks it up during filming. It's very hard to see at first, but when you actually look at it in film, you will notice those kind of things. Now, one of the things that's great about this is that unlike the limited edition, this version is made to look exactly like the uh, on-screen prop. The limited edition had uh, all this gray that you see here, which is the, the top portion of, of the head, the side of the cheek here, the side of the cheek on this side, and the side of the breathing apparatus is all over here. Was actually, on the limited edition, it's sprayed on to look like a nice, gun, even gunmetal gray, whereas this one was brushed on which I believe is how they did it in the film, which accounts for a lot of interesting things. You see the brush strokes here, I, I believe, in this uh, thing. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit. Uh, it's a little stuck. There we go. So, as you can see here, there are brush strokes. And these brush strokes look very nice. It's all over in the bottom of the helmet. The detail on that was just... Like they, they, it looks to me like they were in a rush to be like trying to fix this ID, this whole thing. So they just grabbed the brush and started painting. And because of that, I believe this is why we have the famous C scar, which you see right here. Now, originally, I thought this C scar was like it was a cut part in the helmet, but it actually looks to be paint. It's painted right here. I believe you can see that. So you grab that a little closer. And there's like a little paint on this end. Now, Obviously, if you were looking at this, you might think, oh, there's an imperfection in this helmet. I got to send it back. I don't like it. But this is the imperfection that was in the film. And what's also cool is that there's a little dent right here, which is really nice. Because that was also, I, I want to believe that's also in the film. I'm not quite sure. I have to look at it over again. But you have that particular thing. And what's really cool, too, is the tusks on these things, these metal tusks. I would call them. Uh, the one on the right side of the helmet is painted with a little black on it to give it a little wear and tear, whereas the other one on the left is much more cleaner, nicer. And it just gives you that look of though it's been worn. And it's one of those ideas that in George Lucas's films, there is this idea of uh, everything being uh, having the look of used or used space. So nothing looks brand new unless, of course, you count the Imperial uh, Army or the Imperial officers and everything. They're all super clean. Darth Vader wasn't that clean in the first film. But afterwards, he had a brand new version of his helmet, which was all cleaned up, much nicer. 
the idealized of what they were they wanted to achieve in the first film. But this to me still looks like the best version of him. So uh, let me actually get the other helmet portion on there and we can see it in its full entirety. And here we have it guys. I placed the top portion of the helmet onto the Darth Vader head and I gotta tell you this looks menacing. I don't know what it is about these uh, imperfections and these uh, brush strokes and everything else. This matted looking helmet but it looks amazing. I mean god I feel like I'm looking into the Darth Vader character himself from the movie. It's a part of history here. That's really interesting to see and as you can see right here the side view and as you can see how the helmet actually covers a lot of the eyes in some areas and and because if it wasn't for this gunmetal gray you would not be able to see any of these details so it's uh, this is what they ended up doing and it's amazing looking that side profile god that looks so great it's really cool look the back end looks really nice very matted not much reflection of it but it looks really good doesn't it absorbs a lot of the light rather than reflect it that side profile looks amazing and just for some size comparisons here is the EFX collectibles Darth Vader helmet next to the Star Wars Black Series Darth Vader figure of the same movie on New Hope and I mean obviously this is not the exact same scale but it's really cool because you can see the details that were on this figure is similar to that of this one so that's really cool to have So once again, guys, I want to say thank you for joining me today for this very special unboxing and review of the EFX Collectibles Star Wars Darth Vader Helmet, the Legend Edition. I am very happy to have this in my collection. It's something I'm really glad that to have. Um, it's just the, the perfect thing to have and uh, to represent the Star Wars uh, series for me. And just having Darth Vader here with the official looking helmet from the movie from the new hope is just fantastic i have no idea where i'm going to put this yet um but i'm i'm just glad to have it uh, i do want to also say thank you to brian ono and the people at efx collectibles for making it possible for me to get this helmet uh throughout the you know exchanges of uh, previous uh, purchase products and all that stuff it just makes it very easy for me and for any other person hopefully who's concerned you know about you know their customer service policies and stuff they're very you know they reach out to them they'll help out as best they can um, I also want to say thank you to the rest of my subscribers there. I have reached over 1,300 subscribers, which is not something I thought I would ever have gotten. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that you guys are checking out my videos and uh, are able to see the things that I can provide in terms of, you know, f action figure stuff or any kind of collectibles I might have. Um, and also, um, if you guys are interested, I will be posting up at some point a uh, Instagram so I can actually do uh, photos or I'll show photos of things that I do so that I so that, that way I can't do always videos but photos I can show you process of things that I've done to my figures but overall thanks to all of you guys if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't be able to do this or at least I wouldn't uh, you know be tempted to try and show off or I wouldn't say show off but like sh you know show you guys my collection and the things I do so very thank you to the to you guys um, if you like this video, please, please, please push the like button, uh, subscribe, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them on the video below, and I will catch you guys later. May the force be with you.